Let us pray just for a moment. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for the blessed Lord Jesus, who has made all these great blessings that we are having the privilege of anticipating in, possible by His great vicarious suffering, death, burial, and resurrection, and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we pray tonight that you'll bless us together as we wait for farther word from thee. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. We be seated. such a privilege to be here again tonight in the Philadelphian church. That's right. I haven't got too much voice and a little volume goes a long way here. I, um, my little boy, Joseph, when uh, two days ago, wife not knowing she was going to get to come, he developed under this great uh, rainy season that we're having a sore throat. Well, he's daddy's boy, you know, so I have him up playing and jumping and playing with him. And, well, I find out that I got a little horse on the road coming up here. But it's worth it to have a fine boy like Joseph <laughs> to play with. But the Lord was good to him, and we prayed over a certain matter and asked the Lord if it was his will that to do a certain thing, that he would stop the fever immediately. He did not. We waited for about four hours. Then I prayed again, Lord, if it's your will for me to do this, stop the fever, and immediately it went away. So then I never come back no more. So I, I knew it was God then moving for a decision that I had to make right away. So I was so thankful. Now, Brother Joseph uh, asked me to come up and speak here at the church, being that we were here for this great convention of the full gospel Christian businessmen, and I see many of them uh, seated here tonight. And I'm very grateful for them and for their uh, being represented here tonight. Brother Rowe and Brother Cole and all many of them out in there that that is here in the service tonight. Brother Sonmore, our brother from over in Switzerland. I can't, no need to be trying to call that Armenian name. I couldn't do it. And, uh, but, but many are here, and we're grateful for those men. And I see my good friend, the Normans, here from uh, out of town, and I see also Brother Stockman and my brother from Germany, and, uh, or Switzerland, rather. No, it's uh, South Africa. And, uh, oh, they're just here from everywhere. I remember the first, last service I had in the tabernacle at Jeffersonville, before leaving on the evangelistic tours, my wife sang for me, they come from the east and west, you've heard it, to come from the land afar, to feast with the king, to dine as his guest. Now, blessed these pilgrims are. Thank you, Joseph. That's good water for Chicago. We got it beat in Jeffersonville. A whole lot. <laughs> Yours is out of the lake and ours is out of the well. But... We all know that this is just the outskirts of Jeffersonville, so as it goes out this way, we had to come to Lake Water. <laughs> we are happy to be in Chicago in this great convention here now at the Sherman Hotel. And we pray that God's blessings will rest upon the, on this service and the Christian businessman. And as Brother Joseph said, no advertisement, just a little place where we could get together. There's lots of churches in here, you see. So it was just a little place to get together. I knew Ju Joseph real well, and he would excuse me tonight being hoarse and so forth. And I thought it would speak just a little while, and then I'm going to pray for the sick. And tomorrow afternoon, the Lord willing, I've got an evangelistic service for tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. I don't think there's any other service in as I know of, in session tomorrow afternoon, and I've got an evangelistic message on eternal life. So if you're around and 
want to come out, we'd be glad to have you. Tomorrow night again, we probably pray for the sick again tomorrow night, and then the convention starts Monday, officially starts. So the Lord bless you now as you pray for me, as I read here out of God's Word just a, a little text, as we would call it a text, and see what the Lord would give us for context. I'm also glad to look in the back and see my good friend, Brother John O'Bannon from Louisville, came up with us the other day, and I'm, we got mixed up in the crowd somewhere this morning, Brother John, and I... Uh, Lost you, but I'm glad to see Brother O'Bannon out tonight at the service. I want to read just a portion or just a word or two out of Second Chronicles 20:17. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to use that for a text. Second Chronicles 20:17. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. <clears throat> we are so acquainted with these scriptures, and in this day that we live, we see such a hustle and bustle of the people, how people are just going from place to place, driving through the streets like Jehu and and not knowing where they're going and caring less and ramming into each other and wrecking. And it just seems to be such a neurotic age. It's time, I think, that we all stood still just a little while. Right. Kindly taken inventory. Where are we going? Well, Dwight Moody used to make these same tours through here and probably a horse and buggy. And he done the work that better than we're doing it today. And Grandpa, Grandma, how they went places, but seems like that we're just in such a hurry and going nowhere. Now, in this particular scripture that we just read, it was for a great crisis had come. The people were all nervous, upset. Because there was a great invading army. The Moabites were coming up against Judah. And it was a strenuous time. And the people were all flusterated. They didn't know which way to go. Jehoshaphat, the righteous man of God, had tried to do everything that he knew how to serve the Lord. And now the people were all tore up because there was a great invading army. So many times that we get all to a place where we can't stand still and nervous. Just as we start to do something good, then we see trouble coming, but that is the devil trying to upset right. the program of God. We find it in our individual lives. We find it in our church world. We find it in our national affairs. You find it everywhere. And then we can know that when we are getting ready to do right, wrong is always present. But the way to overcome that is to think in your heart which way God would have you to go and which is the best way, then stay with that way. So in that great day of hour of a flusteration, the Lord spoke, and he spoke to a little prophet standing near who said, stand still and see the salvation of God. You'll not have to fight this battle, but as long as they were together in praying, it was God's battle. And I think the same thing applies tonight. In this great hour where the great church uh, people and the great churches are stewing and, and fussing with each other and denominational barriers are breaking us apart and we battle from this side and that side, it's time to stand still. It's God's battle. 
not ours to begin with. God wants us to stand still. And when God gets ready to do anything, usually He commands His people to stand still. One time when the test was on, when the covenant people had come up out of Egypt, led by the Holy Spirit, Moses, their great leader, and the spies that went over into the promised land, ten of them come back and said, we cannot take it. They're too great. We're too small. But there was two men, Caleb and Joshua, who had been over there. And they said, they still the people. The first thing, one saying this and one saying that. One saying, why did you bring us out? If that just isn't the conditions today, I don't know it. Why did we do this and why did we do that? And Caleb still the people before Moses. And he said, we are well able to go over and take it. Because it depends on what you're looking at. Some of them were looking at the obstacle. The great armies and the great walls and the great giant size of the people. But Caleb was looking at the promise of God. And it was the hour had come. When Caleb had to get the people still before he could tell them the promise of God. I think that's a very needy thing today is for the people to stand still and see what God has promised. It's the day that God's fulfilling his promise. These things must be. They've got to come. Therefore, we must see God's promise and stand still and watch God's salvation move into it. God always works according to His Word. Still in the people. When God gets ready to do anything, the people is all tore up. The reason they were tore up in their journey is because there was a mixed multitude that went up. And the testing time came. Oh, I want you to notice this, that every time that God makes a move, there's usually a mixed multitude. It attracts attention of all and creates a mixed multitude. When God makes a move, you'll find all kinds of isms and everything moving with it. But the testing time came. God tests every son or daughter that comes to him. No exceptions at all. God gives them the testing time to prove them. Now, when God was ready to speak, he had to still the people. And it was one day way down coming out of Egypt before they got there that God wanted to show his glory. And God can only show His glory when His people stand still and look for it. That's what's the matter today with our church. People does not stand still and look for the glory of God. In the Scriptures written, stand still and see the glory or the salvation of God. Now, Coming up to the Red Sea. What a time. This covenant people who had the promise of God and who were standing firm on the promise. And it's so strange to see that when people take a stand for God, looks like that the devil throws everything in their way that he can throw in their way. That's right. That's right. But God makes a way through that way. Some of my greatest experiences I've ever witnessed before God is when I got to a place where I couldn't go over, under, or around. But just stand still. God makes a way through it somehow. 
He hasn't failed yet, and he never will fail. God cannot fail. And it seemed like when these children of Israel had got up to this Red Sea, the pillar of fire leading them, Pharaoh's army behind them, the mountains and the sea cutting them off. If all nature would have wept out for this little people unarmed in a great marching army, but sometimes God's path leads right through such places. God wanted to show His power. God loves to display His power. Oh, sometimes when I take my little Joseph or one of my little girls and I sit down to talk with them and get them up on my lap, you don't know how it makes me feel. One of them says, draw your muscle up, Daddy. Oh, you got such a big muscle. <laughs> There's not much there, but as long as they think that, it makes me feel good. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father likes for His children to know that He's got muscles. He can do things for them. And sometimes I bring a conversation up so it has to lead to that. I just love to hear Him say it. I used to be a pugilist. I'm getting old and fat and flabby and decrepit now. But I still like to think that I'm back like I used to be. But there's one thing about God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no old age with Him. He's eternal. And not only that, but everyone that receives Him becomes eternal with God. For there's only one eternal life, and God has that alone. And when we receive God's eternal life, we become eternal with God. Everything that has a beginning has an end. God had no beginning and He has no end. He's eternal forever. And as they got there to the Red Sea, God wanted to display His power. So He had the Red Sea to Stand still. Wall itself up and stand at attention while a covenant little bunch of holy rollers march to the breast of it to victory. You say holy rollers, Brother Branham? Yes, they were holy rollers. For when they got on the other side and seen what God had did, they acted like a bunch of holy rollers. One singing in the Spirit and the other dancing in the Spirit and beating tambourines. But God had the Red Sea to stand still and watch Him display deliverance to His people. If His people today would only listen to Him, stand still to see His promise, He'd like to display that same thing to Him today to deliver His people from their bondage of sin and doubt, frustration, sicknesses, and every redemptive blessing that Jesus died for belongs to the people. Hallelujah. It's yours. God got the sea to stand still to watch Him do something. Then one day, when the people had been promised the promised land, They were fighting a hard battle. And Joshua was at the head of the battle. And the sun was going down. God wanted to show His people who He was. So He had the sun to stand still while the earth moved or stopped or whatever it did until God displayed His power. He can make the sun stand still. Stand still, son. I'm fixing to do something. I want to display my power to a people who's doing exactly that I promised them to do. 
Oh, what a blessed privilege it is to know that we serve that same God today. He'll make everything stand still while he displays his power. One day, there was a prophet who stood firm on God's eternal blessed promise. He took God at his word and knew that God was able to deliver him. And the king threw him into a lion's den where the lions and tigers and the wild beasts hungered for this very purpose. And when the lion started up to the prophet, God made them stand still all night long while he displayed his power over his prophet. The lion stood still. And one day, they were going to burn some people up by the intense heat of a furnace. And God wanted to display his power. And he made the fire stand still and at attention while he carried a conversation with his church his group that kept his commandments and there wasn't even a spell of fire on them when they come out. God made the heat in the fire stand still and watch his display. One day, when it was a storm come down on a sea and the waves was about to tear a little ship to pieces, there was a lonely Galilean laying in the back of that boat asleep. And oh, they become clusterated. The believers all scared and tore up. And God wanted to display His power. He walks up to the helm of the boat and put His foot upon it and looked up towards the heavens to the winds and said, Peace be still. And the winds and the waves stood at attention while the Son of God with His little church sailed across the sea. God made the winds and waves stand still. He loves to display His power. He loves to show His his omnipotence. One day, there was an old blind beggar Setting by the walls of Jericho, no doubt dreaming in his heart of the days gone by when there were great men in the earth that took God at his promise. And thinking back to a little boy when he used to lay on his young Jewish mother's arms when she kissed him, and his little eyes as bright as the stars in heaven. How he could remember of seeing the great stars at night. How he could see the flowered hills of Judea. Hear his mother speak of the stories that when the great Joshua stood just beyond the walls of Jericho there and met the captain of the host of the Lord. How that God made the Jordan stand still one day why he displayed his power to bring the people into their position place. How he loved to hear those stories of the Shunammite woman and the little dead baby when God made death stand still. Hold its peace until he could show that I am the resurrection in life. Makes everything obey him. He loved those stories. And he sat there thinking, oh, that's been many years ago. And a noise came by. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth goes by. God wanted to display his love to a blind beggar. 
God wanted to show that Calvin mob that he was just the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible said that Jesus stood still and said, bring him here. God stopped his own son to stand still to display his power. If God had to stop his son to stand still to display his power in this flusterated age that we're living in, how much more should we stand to show to the people to fulfill the word? Not that he had to, but the word might be fulfilled. God wanted to fulfill his word and to seal the messiahship of his son. There was a man dead, buried, laying in the grave, stinking. The skin worms was crawling through his body. All hopes was gone. But I see a little figure who said there was no beauty in him that we should desire. Straightened his little stooped shoulders and said, I am the resurrection and life, yes. saith God. Yes. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yes. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Said, Believest thou this? She said, Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God that was to come into the world. Yes. Upon the confession of that faith and her faith in the Son of God, God was going to display his power. Yes. And a man's soul that was four days' journey somewhere out out in the space. He made the death angel stand still while he raised that man again to life. And corruption knew its master. And a man had been dead four days, stood on his feet and lived again. God made death stand still. Not only that, but in his resurrection he proved his messiahship. This world's getting more nervous. The church is nervous. It's tottering like a drunk man coming home. Right, right. Trying. But one of these days, she's going to have a nervous prostration, sure enough. That's right. But God will make everything stand still. Even the time will stand still and blend into eternity when he comes to receive his church. I'm looking for that day. Yeah. That Holy blessed hour. My brother, sister, this old America, this Chicago, has received shake after shake. The church has been sent mighty man. The Thelma Gardners, the, the old Roberts, the A.A. A. Allens, and the different ones that's crossing the Billy Grimms has crossed the nations. And God has proved His power when He can get man stand still long enough and look into that scripture and get the denomination ideas out of their head. God's proved His power that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in the face of this, in this great shaking hour, that when the devil, if he can't keep you from seeing the truth, he'll push you overboard with it. The church is shook again. Man and brethren, let me say this to you. Ye shall not fight this battle. Another denomination won't do any good. Or neither a persecution against God will never do any good. Let's stand still and see the salvation of our God. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll display himself as he did yesterday. He will today and forever. And when the greatest prince that ever stood on earth was led to Calvary as an antidote for sin, there he died to take away the sins of the world. And he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we were healed. When he was laid into the grave and laid there for three days and nights, 
But he could not see corruption because the Bible said he could not. God made every devil hell take back everything he ever said. That's right. Oh, how I love this wonderful Jesus. He made every devil in hell drop a flag. He made every unbeliever and critic to shame. When he displayed his mighty power, death stood still over Jerusalem, and Jesus rose again from the dead and is alive tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just a few days ago, as I was telling you, down yonder in a little old lake in Kentucky, a little dead fishy land on the water, for a half hour, I saw God make that death stand still and a simple little fish. If you don't think you're more than a fish, how much more is a man than a fish? But God wanted to show he'd take the simple things and show that he was still the resurrection life. He made death stand still over that fish and he received his life and swam away again. It was Congressman Upshaw who sat down in California, been afflicted for 69 years, I believe it was, in a wheelchair, bound for all his days to be in a wheelchair. When every doctor that he could go to and been a congressman, he went to the best. Every bone specialist and everything else, he tried everything that he could, and he was a total afflicted for life. But God made the scientists stand still and see Congressman Upshaw rise from his wheelchair and come to the platform giving God praise. Surely. It was in two years ago, October's issue of the Reader's Digest, when God made Mayo Clinic stand still and hear the testimony of little Donnie Martin on that incurable disease when he was brought to the platform in the Holy Spirit, told him exactly what to do, and God healed the boy there. The scientific world, John Hopkins and Mayo's, when I went there, they laid the Reader's Digest on their platform or on their table there to be read. God made the medical world stand still and see Donnie Martin be healed by the power of God. Ah, be his servant tonight. And declare him right. God will make every sin that you ever committed. The devil that's called your soul for his own. He'll make the devil stand still tonight. Watch the power of God come down and take away your sin and iniquity. And give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He'll make every cancer drop. He'll make every blinded eye come open. He'll make the cripples walk. He'll let the devil who afflicted you stand still and see the glory of God. Not your battle. Just stand still. It's God's battle. Don't be flustered. Don't be upset. Stand still. We're living in a tremendous time. We're living in a great time. The church should stand still now. You receive the promise. Stand still. Watch the glory of God. He's not the I was. He's the I am. He's the same. We'll just stand still as they did the I am. The same I am lives tonight. While we're thinking all these things, let us bow our heads just a moment. Blessed Heavenly Father, as we humbly approach thy throne in behalf of the people that Thou hast given us tonight. There may be some here, Lord, who's run from one church to another and from one place of amusement to the other. There might be nightclub dancers. There might be whiskey drinkers. There might be tobacco users. There might be pleasure seekers here tonight. Just tried to find peace and could not find it. Oh, God, your promises, blessed are they that hunger and thirst 
for they shall be filled. Let that thirst become so real tonight into their innermost being, into the heart of those people, that they'll stand still just now and accept Christ. If they've had trouble with their lives, temptation has overthrown them through lust and worldly living. You'll make every devil stand still as they walk from here. You'll make them, the old crowd, stand still and watch a saint walk by the bar room without any trouble at all. Grant it, Lord. Speak to the hearts of the people. While we wait on thee, and now we are standing still to see what you have done. As these few words fell into the hearts of the people, if it has, while we're standing still waiting, would you just raise your hands to God and say, God, while I'm yielded just now, wash me and make me over again. I've been all troubled. I've run from one place to another. But I'm going to stand still from the night on. I'm now going to receive Christ. While you have your heads bowed, the church of praying, would you raise up your hands and say, pray for me, brother. As I, God bless you, little lady. God bless you, brother. God bless you, lady. God bless you, my brother. Wonderful. Oh, how Wonderful. Right while a man raised his hands, I seen God do something for him. Oh, Jesus still lives. He's here tonight. Just here. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sister. God bless you over here, lady. Someone else. Just raise your hand. I've seen a man who was afflicted sitting right here. He don't know it yet, but he's healed right now. He accepted Christ and God healed him. I it done just a moment ago. God bless you, brother. Someone else? While we're praying, I'm standing still. Lord, God bless you, lady. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. God bless you. That's right. I'm really off now for you that's sick, needy. Say, I'm standing still, Lord. I want to see your salvation. You said it's not my battle. There's no need to be being all frustrated and worked up. Should I belong to the assembly? Should I belong to the church of God? Should I be a Methodist? Should I be a Baptist? Should I go to the Philadelphia church? That's not it. Stand still. And see the salvation of God. Would another sinner, a person that's having trouble along the road, say, by God's grace, I stand still tonight, Brother Bam, to see the grace of God. God bless you, lady. That's good. Some of you have been a dozen or two to raise up their hands. God bless you, the sister sitting right here in front. That's very good. Will there be another just before we pray? God bless you, lady. That's good. Our Heavenly Father, tonight we bring humbly to thee these who has received the word. There are many here who is living victorious and on top of the mountain for those who are happy. But there are those here who are standing needy. They've been frustrated, running from place to place. I pray, God, that just this moment that the great Holy Spirit will get into their hearts and do that which they cannot do for themselves. Neither can their intellectual powers ever move to that place to give them that satisfaction that they've longed for. But may the Holy Spirit come into their soul just now and give them God's satisfying potion. I pray this blessing to them in Christ's name. Amen. Blessed thing. Do you feel good? Just, would you put up your hands? Let's sing that song once now. Just as I
the blessed old gospel that just scours you out on the inside. It does me, it just makes me feel like a different person. Now, my beloved friend, I claim that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why do we jump from pillar to post and run to this and run to that? When you don't have to do that, just stand still. Watch the salvation of our God. If Christ is not risen from the dead, we have no salvation. If He isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever, we have no salvation. But if He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we have salvation. And it's through His promise. May we solemnly wait on this as we pray for the sick. Don't be aflusterated. There's some cards given out. We're going to call some to the platform. And you that just raised your hand there, certainly accepted Christ, that nervous and shoulder condition you had, it's gone from you now. Just believe with all your heart, yes, sir. That's right. You're healed now. Go home, be well. You raised your hand a while ago to Christ. Is that right? You don't feel that anymore, do you? Your nervousness is gone. Your shoulder condition's finished. That's what will you suffer with. See? It's all over. You're healed, sir. What is it? You don't have to guess. You don't have to join the Lutheran, the Baptist, the Presbyterian, or Assemblies, or the Philadelphian Church. Just stand still and see the glory of God. Just be still. Watch it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What prayer cards? These, you say? These ones are 100? 50 to 100. All right. Be 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Move out along the side of the line here. And we'll pray for the sick. Now, while they're coming, and go down there, somebody will help us down there. Um, Brother Hoffman, what's that? Brother Old Bannon, yes, he's right here. There's nothing on the top. Brother Old Bannon, would you come here just a moment, if you please? Billy wants you to help him. Now, to the rest of us. I believe I just, how many did I call? 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 16. All right, while they're coming. All right. I'd like to ask this now. Let us be still. This is not ours to weary. It's come a day like the prophet said. There come a day where it would not be day or night. But in the evening, it would be light. And we're living in the blessed evening tide. There are people here from the eastern country sitting here now present. And we know that the Oriental people had the Bible 2,000 years before we had it. The Holy Ghost first fell in the east. That's when the sun rose. When they thought they'd put it out, it just rose. And now, it's come to a day, a dismal day, like the prophet said. They've had enough salvation or lied on it to accept Christ as Savior. But it's evening time now. The suns are going down. And civilization has traveled from the east to the west. We're at the west coast. One night, if the Lord's willing, maybe at my night to speak Wednesday night, I want to speak on as a convention when the east meets the west. Prophetic message. But we're at the end time when the east and west comes together. When the same Holy Spirit, the same Christ that lived in the beginning is living yet today. And I want you to notice just before the going down of the sun, here it is. God has made the shade clouds of denominations stand still while the Son of Righteousness is rose with healing in His way. The clouds of shadows of doubt and skeptics and infidels are now shut up. God's made them stand still to see His glory. Just yield yourself tonight. 
and you'll see his glory. If Christ has risen from the dead, then Christ didn't claim to be a healer. He claimed that he didn't do nothing until the Father showed him. Everyone knows that. And he said, the things that I do shall you also, even more than this, for I go to the Father. Yet a little while the world sees me no more. Then if you'll be still in your heart tonight, just, I don't mean in your outward, I mean in your heart, settle it and say, oh Christ, I love you. And I'm keeping still about this and that, whether I shall take this or take that. I'm taking you at your promise. Please, Christ, tonight, let me see your divine power displayed like you did in the days gone by. Then my soul will stand still. My spirit will stand still. My intellectuals will stand still. My learnings will stand still. And I'll see your word and accept it. And Satan shall stand still. Your sickness shall stand still. And watch the glory of God bring you from sickness unto health again. Stand still and see the glory of God. All right. Just stand still for the next 15, 20 minutes. What a challenge. Here we are. Here's the display that when Christ must show himself alive. If I only teach you a word and the word does not manifest the one who spoke it, then the words no more than any other written words. If this Bible doesn't live tonight in this tabernacle, then it isn't God's promise. Then Buddha has just as much right, and the followers of Buddha, Mohammed has just as much right, Mohammed does as we do, his followers, seek Jans, whatever they may be, the witch doctors just as well off. But there's one thing certain that Christ is raised from the dead. And if he could only get his church to stand still just a few minutes, is Caleb still the people? Now be still, watch and see if God still is. Here we are at the Red Sea with any experience. The Red Sea, when they come there, there was at a place where God had to do something. I preached Christ the same yesterday and forever. Stand still and see the glory of God. It's not your battle to begin with. It's God's battle. It isn't your promise to begin with. It's God's promise. Right. And here I stand tonight. It's not my weary to find out about this woman. It's God's promise to do it. That's right. I just stand still. And the glory of God does the work. If I put one of my own words in, it wouldn't be right. I don't put my words in, I just stand still. Let God do it. Don't you get worked up and say, well, if I had a prayer card, stand still. Now the lady stands here. She's standing still. I'm standing still. Everything's quiet. Let's see the glory of our God. Believe, have faith, don't doubt. I challenge your faith to that. Now, if the Lord Jesus is raised from the dead, here stands a woman I've never seen in my life. We're strangers to each other, but there's something wrong with her or something, she would be standing here. And if Christ is the same yesterday and forever, the woman at the well who came to him, and he claims to be the same. He can display the same mighty power. And if he could display the power here on this woman to reveal to her like he did the woman at the well, he can display the healing just the same as he could the sign. The lady's not here for herself. She's here for another woman. That's right, isn't it, lady? 
That's a much younger woman. It's your daughter-in-law. She's been in a some kind of an institution or hospital. It's a mental condition or shock treatment. That's right. And now she has tumor. And you're standing here in her stead. That's thus saith the Lord. Now, is that true? Raise your hand. You stood still and received His glory. I stood still and seen His glory. And you stood still and seen His glory. Then He's the same Lord Jesus. Go and receive what you've asked for, sister. And may God of heaven give to you the things that you've asked for. Amen. How do you do? I suppose we're strangers to each other too. You're standing. Don't be a nervous, worked up. Just stand still. And know that Christ is raised from the dead. And if Christ has raised from the dead and prove it, then every blessed promise that He made is yours. For you are a believer. Correct? Right? If Christ will tell me what you're here for, would you believe that He's alive here? Do you believe it is Christ that would tell me us being strangers to each other? Are we strangers to each other? If it is, just raise your hand. Yes, frankly, you're kind of up for an operation. You've got inward troubles, internal troubles. Been examined for internal trouble. You're also extremely nervous. And you have heart trouble. And the heart is a nervous heart. That's right. Nervous heart. You're not from here. You're from another city west of here. Way away. Nebraska. A city called Dalton, something like that, Nebraska. That's right. Return home. Jesus Christ has made you well. Go and believe now and don't doubt. Your heart will never bother you. If thou canst believe. All right, lady. Seems like I've seen you. I might have done it. But I have no idea what's wrong with you. You know that. We're, as far as that is, I've seen you somewhere. I can't place it. But do you realize that the same God that stilled the Red Sea is stilling you and I? The same displays power. Look at the audience there. See how still they are? We're watching to see if Christ raised from the dead. He said that works that I do, he that believeth on me, St. John 14, 7. The works that I do shall he do also. That's either right or wrong. You're not here for yourself. You're here for a, a boy. And that's a son. Oh, it's a grandson. It's your grandson. And that grandson has gland trouble. It's affecting his hearing. That's true. That handkerchief that you had in your hand for me to pray for, take and lay it on him, he'll receive his hearing. Go in the name of Jesus Christ and go down. Amen. Are you believing? Have you come to stand still in the presence of Almighty God and to seize this great power? If He would never, He could not give me power to heal you because He's already done the healing. It's a finished work. But He can give me power to make you realize if there's anything in you to bring you up to a place to make you realize that he's raised from the dead and standing here. Is that right? I see the lady with some kind of a, a bandage around her arm. No, oh, it's a, taking a blood pressure. High blood pressure she's suffering with. That is right. And then you have some sort of a bladder trouble. And you just recently had an operation for that bladder trouble. That's right. And you're standing still still in the presence of Almighty God to be healed. Do you believe it? Will you accept it? Then in Christ's name go and receive it and be made well. Amen. God bless you. 
How do you do? Just a moment. The lady's got a deaf spirit on her. Would you bow your head just a minute so we can get her to hear? Oh, God, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray that you give her her hearing. Grant it, Lord, and I condemn the devil that has did this to her. Display your power, O oh God, that this woman might hear and then reveal to her, Lord, when she can hear that she might know your glory. I rebuke this devil and cast it out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. How long have you been that way? You hear me all right now? You're healed. Okay. See, here's your little aid hanging here. Okay. That was your best ear, but you can hear out of either one now, see. You hear me? You hear me? You're healed. Now, the Lord bless you. Do you believe me to be his servant? Now, let us talk just a minute now that you can hear. We won't pass you by. You're suffering with some other troubles, which is, you, it makes you stiff. Arthritis. You have arthritis. You are very nervous. Now, I see you had an accident. You broke your wrist. That's right. And now it's sweating. That's right. In Christ's name, I rebuke it and ask for her healing. Amen. Now, move your wrist back forth this way. Like this. Now you go on your road rejoicing. He made well. Let us say praise be to the almighty and living God. Do you believe? Just be still and know that I am God. He said, it's not your battle, it's God's battle. You believe God healed that rupture on you sitting there, sir? Honey, you wanted him to, didn't you? You was praying for it. Is that right? Raise up your hand. All right, if you believe it, you've received it. Amen. Amen. Have faith in God. You want to get over that lady's trouble, that female trouble, if it will be made well? Then believe God and go make a joyful noise to Him now that you have been still. And praise Do you believe with all your heart? You want God to heal you that arthritis to make you well? Then go on your road and rejoice and say praise be to God and make you well. Our trouble's easy for God to heal. Do you believe that? Raise up your hands and receive your healing. And go on the road and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to eat again, get that stomach trouble away from you, be made well. Been taking you down, losing weight and everything. I see you where you look much bigger than you do now, much heavier. It just constantly keeps you like a belch and everything in your stomach all the time. Cranks you can't sleep at night. That is not right. It's right. Now do you believe? Then go and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son. Just believe this way. Do you believe? Well, you know, when your trouble's worse, when you lay down at your heart, you know, it just keeps fluttering around and making it like that. It's a nervous heart. Do you believe God heals you? Then go and receive the glory of God and be made well. Do you believe God take that arthritis away from you? Then go off the platform, stomping your feet and praising God. Don't be afraid now. Do what you're told to do. Do you believe God? Be still, he said, and know that I'm God. Oh, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be all torn to pieces each year. Got something wrong with your breast, haven't you, lady? Little lady sitting there with a paint thing on her. I see the video. Yes, that's right. You got something wrong with your breast. I don't know you and you don't know me. But you touched something there, didn't you? You know you touched something. That was Christ who touched the high priest of our confession. The lady sitting next to you. Got stomach trouble, haven't you, lady? You believe Christ to heal you? Let me ask you something. You see you women, you're just sitting there together. You seem to be friends or something or know one another. That's right, you are a queen. 
You believe me to be God's prophet, that God just sent me here, or a servant of others, sent me here just to declare that He is God and He loves me and raised me today? Do you believe it? You've got a son, the lady sitting here. you got a son this is this meeting. And he has a back trouble. And he wants to be healed. That's right, isn't it? Lady, you there? you got a daughter here this meeting. She's got colon trouble. She wants to be healed. That's right, both of you raise up your hands. All right, you're both healed now, all four of you in the line. There you are. You're going to be made well. Do you believe God's still gone? Then he said, it's not your battle, it's his battle. He's the one. It's the enemy that's coming. He said, but you stand still. Don't be frustrated. We're going to pray a prayer of faith for everyone in here. And every one of you will be healed. Do you believe it? Then lightly lay your hands on each other. Oh, my brother. Don't you get scared. Don't be excited. What more can God do? He's still around. I know that he's gone. Not your battles. They had prayed. And he said to the army, go down there and just stand still and watch my glory. Well, there's two days back in the far of the way. He put the enemy in such a confusion, such a riot, so they killed each other. Certainly. And if you'll just be still now and know that God made you the promise, he gave it by his Bible, he confirmed it by his resurrection. He just showed it to his church. He displayed it here tonight. I kept praying until I got one to get show it's a deaf woman to show that he can heal the deaf. He can do anything where it's blind, deaf, dumb, whatever it is. It's not our battle. It's his battle. He made the promise. Let's believe now. Let's pray. Here's Jesus by the fruits of this little message tonight. Somehow, by your amazing grace, we have found favor in your sight that you've displayed your great arm of power. You've shown forth signs here that man down to the ages longed to see. You show signs here that John Wesley longed to see. You show signs that Calvin longed to see. Thinking Moody, Benny Knox, all of them longed to see. But the evening lights have come. The denominational barriers are standing still. And the evening lights are shining. And we're happy to know that we're living in the radiant, healing power of the great Son of God who spread forth His wings over this western horizon to show that He's the same that He was in the eastern countries in the beginning of breaking of day. This audience tonight is standing still. I'm praying to you the best that I know how to pray of faith. Many years as we see the as our Savior. They have tucked the as their healer. Now, God, as they're waiting in this blessed moment, may the Holy Spirit come from heaven. May he charge every heart in here. And may it just not be as time's gone by. May it be different. May they rise and see the devil defeated and every cloud of darkness smoked away. And standing out down her standing still to watch the afflicted walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear. Satan, stand still and see the power of the living God. We adjure thee to stand off of these people. But God displays his power in Jesus Christ's name. I challenge every man crippled or whatever you are, every person that's got a crippled arm, deaf, dumb, or blind, to stand to your feet in this moment. If you're sick with cancer or rheumatism, whatever it is, Satan will have to stand still and watch you rise from that chair and give God praise. Stand to your feet down and give God praise. Watch the devil stand on the sidelines. Rise up in the name of Jesus Christ and see the glory of God. There you are. The whole audience to their feet. 
Let us give him praise now as the great Jehovah and living God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A little woman that couldn't get up just a few moments ago, her friend put her hand on her and up, she jumped standing high here. And still is see the power of God. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away in vain. Let us raise our voices, our hands, our hearts, our face, our emotions to God, and sing it to the top of our voice. I will praise him. All right. Thank you. 